In this video, we look at how to develop and check solutions to simple logic problems. We get an understanding of the term algorithm, and we look at how to express the solution to a simple problem as an algorithm using pseudocode. People are often worried or even scared by the term algorithm. This is almost always because they simply don't understand what it means. Typically, it is a term people have come across until they study computer science. So an algorithm is a specific sequence of steps that can be followed to complete a task and that always terminates. We follow simple algorithms in our everyday life all the time without even realising it. When we make a sandwich, we follow an algorithm and it will be different from someone else's. Do we want white or brown bread? Or indeed a roll or a baguette? Are we having spread? Are we including mayonnaise? What's our fillings? This is all an algorithm. A computer program is simply an implementation of a given algorithm. An algorithm is not a computer program in its own right. In the exam, you need to be able to develop solutions to simple logic problems, check solutions to simple logic problems, and express the solution to a simple problem as an algorithm. Now, algorithms can be presented in a number of ways. Two of the most common are flowcharts and pseudocode. Now, we all know what a flowchart is, but what exactly is pseudocode? Well, pseudocode is simply an alternative, a text-based way of representing the sequence of steps in an algorithm. The prefix pseudo literally means false or not genuine. So pseudocode can be thought of as a simplified form of programming language. It allows us as programmers to lay down the logic of a program in an almost like real code way without actually worrying or getting bogged down with the actual rules and syntax and grammar of a particular language. The pseudocode and flowchart above both represent exactly the same algorithm. Implementing this algorithm as a solution will produce a computer program that asks the user to input two numbers and output which of the two is larger. An important part of problem solving is being able to work out the order of steps that you need to take. You might be asking yourself, is the order of steps even relevant? Well, it all depends on the source of program that you're writing. Many of the programs we use are event driven, at least in part, which means they only take action in response to an event, such as clicking a button, tapping the screen, selecting an option from a drop down menu, or typing on a keyboard. However, the order in which these steps are going to be taken by a user is largely unpredictable. Consider a modern word processor or spreadsheet program. As a developer, you can't possibly predict which buttons, menus or specific functions are going to be used by which users or in which order. That means the various modules that make up this software are coded in such a way that they can be accessed by the user in any order. On the other hand, there are some problems that involve a very predictable sequence of steps. Consider a program for booking cinema tickets online. Certain actions must be taken by the user before they can proceed to the next step. They can't pay for the tickets until they've chosen their seats. They can't choose their seats until they've selected a film. With this problem, there is a clear progression in the required steps. As preparation for the exam, Try thinking about a variety of scenarios and ask yourself the question, is the order of steps required to solve this problem important or not? You could consider scenarios like constructing a house, buying a meal in a restaurant, online grocery shopping, 
Although these are everyday examples, you can apply the same computational logic to problems you encounter in the exam. Now, a little note from the exam board. The AQA specification states, candidates must be able to express the solution to a simple problem as an algorithm using pseudocode with a standard constructs, sequence, assignment, selection, and iteration. So let's have a go at creating a flowchart or pseudocode for an algorithm that calculates how much carbon to dose into a fish tank to maintain safe nitrate levels. Now the following rules should apply. We're going to ask the user to enter a nitrate level from 1 to 50. If the nitrate level is above 10, we want our system to dose 3 milliliters of carbon. If the nitrate level is between 2.5 and 10, it should dose 2 milliliters of carbon. And if the nitrate level is between 1 and 2.5, it should dose 1 millimeter of carbon. Finally, if the nitrate level is less than 1, it should dose just half a milliliter of carbon. Here we see the flowchart that we have created to follow this logic. We can see we've got the start at the top there, followed by enter the nitrate level, a number between 1 to 50. And then we have a number of decision points, which of course we would represent by if statement selection. So is the nitrate level above 10? Well, if it is, we simply dose 3 milliliters and move to stop. If not, we now ask the next question. And we can follow this logic through and make sure that each of our rules has been met by an appropriate condition. You can see now how we've turned this flowchart line by line into pseudocode. Now this code won't run, it's not been written in any given language like Python, Visual Basic or C Sharp, but it's code-like. It's using lines like nitrate equals input. If nitrate greater than symbol 10, then print dose 3 milliliters, else run an if statement. We're using nested if statements, else ifs, and keywords that look like those you use in a real programming language. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is an algorithm? And what is pseudocode? And how can it help in designing a solution to a problem? Thank you.